Hey guys, it's M4J here, and welcome back to the M4J Network here on OpenTTD. First and foremost, my voice is still a little bit funny. I think I mentioned in episode 11 that um, my voice was going, and it went not long afterwards. So um, you'll have to bear with me as I clear my throat and talk with a really deep voice. I don't know, some people prefer my voice like this. I personally do not. Okay, this is 11.5. And uh, this is in response to a couple of requests from a couple of people regarding signals. Because actually, signaling in the version of the game I play, which is Joker's Patch version 1.27.1, um, it's not the same as some other patches out there, and it's also not the same as the vanilla game. Um, one of the downsides to OpenTTD uh, is... The fact that people a lot of the time ask for assistance on Reddit. Assistance is not the right word. They ask for help on Reddit with things like signaling, um, scheduling and stuff like that. And originally I would just answer the question based on my gameplay assuming that's what it was like for everyone. But actually different patches do have different features um, and that does affect the gameplay. So for example, what I'm going to show you here might only work for the version of the game in which I play. Um, so do check that your patch that you play on has these features otherwise I could potentially be giving you advice that will not help you so I apologize in advance for that but I'll do my best to explain this anyway because I know there are people out there that play using Joker's patch so um, I'm gonna show you how I do my signaling and again I, I, I use those words very carefully I'll show you how I do it it's not necessarily the best way to do it but it's the way that works best for me so this is the best scenario I could think of so we got GSMI here to the north and we got GSP here to the south uh, and this shows the two different ways in which I signal major terminus stations um, so before I go any further I'll also say that waypoints are quite crucial um, particularly on this side, GSP, waypoints are extremely crucial to the way in which I uh, do my signaling for GSP. Um, GSMI, not as much, but they're still kind of essential. Um, so I'll show you how I signal these two stations, and then I'll go over to somewhere like Great Winfield Airport and show you how I've signaled that as well, uh, and maybe Winfield too, because they are also different. So first and foremost, you saw here, I went into the signal window, and I clicked on the gear icon. Gear, cog, it doesn't matter too much. They're, they're essentially the same thing. Um, speaking as an ex-engineer, probably not the same thing in that context, but in the game, they're the same thing. So, signal window, gear window. Uh, now, before I go any further, I'll tell you what these are. So these are semaphore signals, obviously, and these are um, colored light aspect signals. I was trying to remember if there's an abbreviation I don't think there is. Um, no, I don't think there is. So my signaling window might look different to others. So as I said, you've got semaphore signals, you've got colored light signals. These signals, top and bottom, do essentially the same job. It's just to do with time eras as to which one of these you use. So before, say, the 1940s, uh, in your game, you would use semaphore signals, or if you've built a heritage railway, something like that. Uh, after 1940 or modern railways, you'll build colored light aspects. Uh, again, I'm not sure if that is actually there. I know it's got aspect in its word, and I know it's got colored in its word somewhere, um, because you've got red, yellow, and green, or red, amber, and green. Anyway, we've got different types of signals. So we've got this one here, which is a block signal. Um, this is a very basic type of signaling. If I come up to here, this is a, a block signal being used here. Essentially, it, it works very simply. If there's no train in this block, this signal will always display green. As soon as a train goes through the signal, it will turn to red, and it will not turn to green again until the next signal is cleared. So until a train completely passes this next signal, this one will remain red. Uh, if there's no train in this block at all, this train, uh, this signal sorry, will remain green. They're the easiest to use. However, they're not really useful on junctions because it only ever lets one train at a time into this whole section here is considered one block in uh, respect of these signals so only one train ever will be allowed in at any one time next you've got the entry signals now the entry and exits I tend to not use 
Um, I am aware of what they do, but I don't really use them very much. So the entry signal is to be used uh, on junctions, or at least on areas where you kind of want two blocks between each train. Um, and I was considering, in fact, the first... Uh, not maybe not the first, so I'm trying to think here. That's the first signal, I think, out of GSMI on the fast lines. So this signal, I'm thinking of upgrading the second signal outside every station to um, an entry signal, and then the third to an exit signal, which I'll talk about in a second, just so that there's always two blocks between each train. Um, whether that'll work or not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll have to move it a little bit further or... Uh, closer to the station. I'm not 100% sure. I might do some experiments off camera and tell you my findings. But an X, an entry signal, sorry, only shows green if the following signal is also green. Um, and, it, you know, you can chain them up. You can have as many entry signals as you like, providing that the exit signal on the opposite side, or the box signal, I don't think it has to be an exit signal, uh, providing that it, it's that one is green then all the entry signals will also show green but as soon as it turns to red I think it does a chain reaction so it goes red 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 all the way down and it's only when the f the final signal turns green that all the rest will then do a chain reaction and turn green so like I said some of that's a bit speculative because I'm not 100% sure how they work I have used them in the past um, on the Jeffries network I did use them um, this time around not really exit signals uh, they work in the same way as block signals, but it is necessary to trigger the correct color on entry. Ah, there you go. Okay. So you do need an exit signal in order to use an entry signal. Um, but they work exactly the same as block signals, basically. So they have a, a red and green. Um, there is actually no amber in these games. Uh, there is a train behavior that implies amber or double amber or yellow, double yellow. Um, but the, the, the signals themselves only show red and green. Um, so that's the exit signal. Then we've got the combo signal. Uh, acts as both an entry and exit signal. So it allows you to build large trees of pre-signals. Now this one I have never used. Uh, and I will probably never use either. Because I just don't see a use for it myself. Some people do use it when they have big stations with lots of trains. Um, row row stations. I think they're, they, it can be quite useful for those. But I see no use for them. So I don't use them. Then we come to the two signals that I've used the most in and around terminus stations. So these are path signals. They perform the same job, but there is a massive difference between them. So this one is a path signal that allows um, trains to enter terminus platforms. So these signals here, all the way along the front of GSMI, GSP, and also all the other terminus stations that we have on the network, they use this path signal. Um, a path signal allows more than one train to enter a signal block at the same time if the train can reserve a path to a safe stopping point. So, what that means is, if I had just a block signal here, or an entry signal, um, block signal is the least useful, because only one train will be allowed to pass any of these signals at any one time. An entry signal, I think, you, you'd have to have an exit signal here, and it would have to be facing the approach uh, and as you can see here these signals are not facing the approach they're facing the departure um, so a block signal sorry a path signal is the most useful because every time a train approaches the tile before so if it enters this tile it then checks this signal and tries to reserve a path into any of the tracks that it is allowed access to if there is a path so, for example, here, this train is currently leaving GSMI, and you can see it has reserved a path along here, and then diagonally along here, along here, and then diagonally into this track here. And you can see there's the black line there. So that signal then turned green because there was a path to the next signal, which is this one here. Not this one here. It has to be a facing signal. Um, this one, so this one allows trains to enter uh, in reverse as well, so it can approach from the back of the signal. Um, this one does the same job pathwise, so a train will stop. So these ones here, uh, actually no, not these ones here. Um, that one there is a one-way path signal, and I think there's one, yeah, that one there as well. Now these ones 
work the same, train approaches, tries to reserve a path, if there is one, signal turns green, train goes through. The difference between the two is this one only allows trains to go th forwards through a signal, it will not allow a train to enter from behind. Um, and that, as you can see here, I use it so that there is always one out road, which means that you don't end up with a, a gridlock scenario. So that is the signals. I think I've gone through everything. If there's something I've missed or there's something that you guys would like me to repeat, please do let me know. Um, Reddit is the best place. You go to reddit.com slash r slash m4j underscore gaming. You can start a new thread there or um, comment on an existing thread and ask me to, to go over something again. Um, probably best actually because I, I will share this video on Reddit. So if you comment on that thread with any additional questions, that will probably be most helpful. Um, so that's how I organize my signaling. Now I'm going to show you how I program my signaling. Oh, this button here as well, by the way, it converts signals. So I won't do one of these ones because I don't want to reprogram them. But somewhere over here, for example, let's say this block signal. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll do it now because I was talking about it. So that one's going to remain a block signal. This one here, I'm going to convert to an entry signal. So you click on the signal that you want to replace it with and then you click the convert and then you click the signal. And you can't really see it, but if I do that one as well, you can see there's a little yellow sign just appeared. And that means that that signal is now successfully converted. Um, yellow for entry, white for exit. I think the path signals have little yellow flashing dots that appear as well. Um, so there is a visible difference between each type of signal. As you can see here as well, the path signal actually has the the feather. This little thing on top is actually called a feather, um, and it's it's for divi it's dot. I can't speak now. It's for diverging lines. So if there's a a main line that that branches off to the left, for example, um, although actually a better example is to the right because this one is pointing to the right. If the signal was just green and the feather wasn't lit, that means you're cleared to go straight on. But if the signal is green and the feather has, I think it's five white dots or six white dots, it might vary. Um, that means you're cleared onto the branch that that spurs off to the right. So I'm not sure why they chose a feather as the distinguishing feature between these two. I'd have put like a little red sign or something on there instead. Because um, even if I come over here and zoom in, it's still just a feather on this side. There's like there's no like no entry sign. Although no entry signs really aren't <laughs> really aren't worth it in railways. But you know what I mean. Anyway, program program ugh, still can't speak. Programmable signals. Try saying that when you've had one too many to drink. So um, this is how I set up my signals. I'm going to show you the GSP ones first because they are easiest. So you click on the gear wheel and then you click on the signal and it opens up this box here. Now I watch Lieutenant Joker's videos, Lieutenant Joker is the maker of this patch. The way he does his signals is slightly different to me. Um, so if you want to get another uh, overview on signaling, I recommend you check out some of his videos as well. There is a link, should be a link, in the description to his channel. Um, and he, he's just started a new Let's Play um, in the last couple of months as well. Uh, so he tends to do his as... Um, an if function, then a, a, a resultant function, and then an else if function. What I mean by that is, um, here you have multiple functions that you can insert. You've got if, else if, or if, else, deny, penalty, unsafe waiting position, long reserve, wait at PBS signal, or slot operation. Now I only really use the top, what's that, five here. Sometimes I use unsafe waiting position, although again, I've not really managed to make it work. I might instead use the PBS signal um, command instead. Slot operation, I believe in real railways, uh, we call it token operation over here. And I think that is like one train it's, it's for single track operation a lot of the time. It's one train can only be in the block at any one time. Um, they have to be in possession of a token or uh, a key or a staff. Um, something that denotes that they are the only train allowed permission to enter the block. There are circumstances in which more than one train can enter. But normal operation, it's one train at a time. 
So I think that's what slot operation is as well. Because um, I think the terminology is different depending on what part of the world you're from. Uh, wait, a PBS signal. Now, PBS is path-based signal, I think is what it stands for. Um, it's path something signal. I know that much. Or actually, would it be path-based signal signal? I don't think that makes sense. It's path something something signal. That's what it is. Um, so it's these, essentially, path signals. So I've not used this one before. I might use it for things like my metro because it's a bit tighter to, to get trains to wait. I haven't got the same storage capacity as I have on these lines. But the main ones I use are the top five here. Now, I always start with a deny. So no train is allowed to enter this signal. So which one did I select? wasn't well, that one. It was that one. So in... Actually, let's tell you what, just for ease, I'll do it that one, because then I won't forget. So, deny. No train is allowed to enter this platform. Now, you might see the overgrown and think I've gone wrong somewhere. It's just because there isn't enough trains entering and exiting at the moment. There will be in the future, though. Then I have an if function. So I went on to insert, and I did if. Once you've done that, this becomes accessible. And here you have lots of different options. So you have train length, max speed, current order, next order, last visited station, cargo, entry direction, PBS entry signal, which again is which one of these signals did it come in from, uh, train group, train in slot, slot occupancy, slot occupancy remaining, and undefined. Now undefined I've never used. In fact, I've never used the bottom five. So I've never used train group because uh, I was advised not to by Joker because the problem with using train group is uh, so this train here for example will be part of a train group in my train list uh, so I could set this platform to only accept this vehicle and other vehicles in this vehicles group but then if I change the name of the group it doesn't automatically update I think that's what I was told or if I move trains in and out of groups or if I get rid of the group um, no train will then be allowed to enter this platform which seems kind of redundant. So I tend to use the top what's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up to entry signal and even then entry signal I only use as a last resort. So in my case with terminus platforms I always start with entry direction which is this one that's currently highlighted because it's the one that I've got here. So in the case of terminus platforms the train will always enter from the back of the signal so that will be my next, or my first if function, my next command on this um, restrictions list. So first of all, deny. Then if train is entering from the back of signal. So I've gone from denying every train from entering this platform to then allowing every train to enter this platform, essentially, because all trains will only enter from the back. Trains leaving will always enter from the front, but because there is no other way for the trains to go, they automatically turn and head forwards anyway. Um, but I will talk about that in a second because there is another thing that you have to bear in mind when you're not signaling a terminus station. So after I've done entry direction, the next thing I do is next order. Uh, and the reason I do next order is because here, for example, we have the waypoints for the fast releases and we have waypoints here for the slow releases. And that is so that all the slow trains are on this side of the tracks, the south side. All fast trains are on the north side because that's the way the platforms are aligned here. Sometimes it's the other way around. So the slow trains will be on the north and the fast trains will be on the south. But in this case, it is the way uh, where the slow trains are on the south and the fast trains are on the north. So to make sure that only slow trains enter these platforms, I think it's up to here. It might even be this one as well. I think this one has shared. Uh, but these bottom five platforms are only for slow trains. So the easiest way for me to do that is to build a waypoint here, call it GSP slow release one, and say that once the train is entering from the back of the signal, if the next order is GSP slow release 1. Now, this one here is an optional. So this is using the cargo function. Um, and the reason is, at one point, this station also handled mail. It doesn't actually do that anymore, but it doesn't hurt because th there will only ever be passenger trains coming in here anyway. So it doesn't hurt just to have that as an extra function because sometimes trains do get lost and end up going the wrong way um, and I don't want a train to accidentally enter the platform and start loading or unloading. 
So I've also got if train can carry cargo passengers. Another thing to note is this here is configurable to be back, front, or you can set compass points. I don't use compass points. I only ever use back or front because really these compass points, I'm not really sure why they're there because depending on which way a signal faces, um, whether it faces north to south or east to west or you know the opposite of that, west to east or south to north, um, you can still only ever enter it from two sides, the front or the back. You can't have a signal here facing east to west, uh, sorry, west to east, and then have a, a train approach from this side, because that doesn't work. I'm thinking maybe they did it because you can build signals on diagonals, but even then you will only ever have a train approach from the front or the back. So I'm still not 100% sure how it works. They're there for a reason though, I'm sure of that. Um, so you've got this back or front. So these are, are variables within these functions. So in terms of entry direction, you've got back to front here or the compass points. Um, and then here, you've got is or is not. Now in this case, it's it's like a binary thing. It either can or it can't. Uh, in terms of next order, you also have is or is not. And then you use this button here to set your target. So you you um, select the order, you do next order is or is not, depending on which one you want, and then you click select target, and then you click on the waypoint, and it sets it. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's covered everything that I had forgotten then. And then here you've got uh, cargo. Every cargo in your version of the game will appear on this list. Um, I use, I think it's the FIRS, F-I-R-S. So I have things like engineering supplies, building materials that you wouldn't get in the vanilla game. Um, passengers mail are the two that I tend to focus on for the stations like this sometimes goods and food as well uh, if I built a well, I do have over here at Guard City North Freight Terminal um, all of these platforms are set up to take trains of different cargoes um, but for passenger stations like over here at GSP I don't worry too much about that passengers mail goods food they're the four passengers in this case and then finally here uh, you actually put a deny function in first and then you use this variable box here to change it to allow so this is essentially saying no trains are allowed in however if a train enters from the back of the signal its next order is GSP slow release one and it the train carries majority passengers then it is allowed to go through the signal and you'll see that some trains will eventually come down here and use this platform. All these signals here are used the same. The ones over here have exactly the same setup, except instead of GSP slow release one, they have GSP fast release one. So that's the first way I set up signals. Uh, for those of you who don't know, by the way, if you have windows open, you can pin them. So you click on the little pin icon here and it, it pins them. Um, and then if I just open up a load of uh, random windows, something like that and you want to close down all these windows but you don't want to close down the pinned ones first of all you pin them and um, that's the, 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 the most important thing to remember and then you just hit the delete key and it closes all the other windows like that um, so yeah I'll talk you through how I've done GSMI and then I'll show you a few other little shortcuts regarding keyboard and things like that for setting up signals so next up uh, let's go to the slow platforms here at GSMI which you can see are positioned to the north and the fast platforms are to the south so it's actually a mirrored version of GSP so this one uses a slightly different setup because I have two sets of waypoints here still but I have north and I have south I don't have slow and fast now this has caused some headaches most of which I have now fixed uh, the game has also fixed itself as well because I think I said this last episode actually having 71 trains or whatever it was all arrive here at the same time clogged up all my lines but actually now um, there's only a few coming in and out at any one time so um, it's relatively congestion free now the reason I've got north and south is because the two lines diverge here so I actually wanted to keep the trains that go on this south route to the south platforms uh, of both sides of the station hence this little overbridge here to make sure that slow trains can actually travel underneath onto this side of the tracks um, and then the north ones go on the north waypoints so the way I've set it up here uh, you can already see so deny 
Train enters from the back of signal, then allow. Uh, sorry, that's not how it works. It's a flowchart, essentially. So, deny. If train enters from the back of signal, then it has one of two options, yes or no. If the answer is yes, then continue to the next function. If the answer is no, then the train is still denied. So in this case, yes, all trains will be entering from the back of the signal. So next up, we go to this function, which is, what is the next order of the train? So all trains that come through in this direction, their current order is GSMI. So the next order is when they leave the station again, which in this case, for this to uh, be verified, is here. GSMI North Release 1. Um, so again, yes. So we move down one. If the answer is no, then it goes back up to deny again. Uh, so the answer was yes, so we can go to this one, which is if train can carry cargo passengers. Now it's exactly the same as GSP. The answer is yes, so we go down again. Now this one, because I haven't got slow or fast waypoints, I still needed to find a way to make sure that the slow trains go into the slow platforms and the fast trains go into the fast platforms. So the easiest way to do that is to look at the train's maximum speed. Now in this case, we have two types of train operating on this line. We have the loco push-pull services, whose top speed is 75 miles per hour, and we have the advanced passenger train, APTs, their top speed is 155 uh, 155 slash 156 miles per hour. Um, I've kind of put some future proofing in here, because there it would have been easy to say, if maximum speed is less than 80, let's say, because these top speeds are only 75, so that is less than 80, so the train would have been allowed in. However, from looking at some of the trains that we've got available in the future, I know that we can have loco push-pull services operating, I think it's 101 is the maximum speed. So um, I've actually set it to 125 because there's enough contingency there. There's 24, 25 miles per hour between the top speed of the slow trains and this variable and the top speed of the fast trains and this variable. Um, so that there's enough of a contingency there that, that there will be no confusion, essentially. Now, this one is a little bit more tricky because you've got max speed here. That's quite easy. Then you've got this. Now, for those of you who, who are knowledgeable with mathematics, you'll know what all these symbols mean. For those of you that are not, um, is and is not is a basic. It's either equal to this or it is not equal to this, much like the orders and the direction of travel and things like that. This one here means less than. So always imagine where it says max speed. Imagine there is a number there instead. And then there's this symbol, and then there's 1, 2, 5 in this instance. Now, I'm going to assume that everyone watching this is above a certain age, but I'm about to use slightly patronizing language. Because when I was at school, the way we were taught it is, imagine there is a hungry crocodile, and the crocodile wants to eat as much as it can in a single bite. So then in this instance, this number is smaller than this number, therefore the crocodile will always eat the bigger number. It's a really bad analogy, but it did the job at the time. The way I always look at it as it's pointing to the smaller value in this case. So it's actually an arrow that's pointing to the smaller number. Um, or you can imagine that it is an angle and it is getting bigger and bigger, or the distance is getting bigger and bigger as it goes towards the larger number. Uh, there's, there's lots of different ways you can look at it, but this is the less than symbol. This one here, second from bottom, this is the more than symbol or greater than symbol. So if I change it, which I'm not going to do, because I'll have to then change it back or remember to change it back. Um, if I change this, it's just switching around the uh, the numbers. So in this case, imagine max speed is replaced by like 150. 150 is greater than 125. So you would have to put this number, uh, this symbol in instead. These ones, uh, so this one and then the equal sign, that means, this one means less than or equal to, this one means greater than or equal to. So let's say I changed 125 to 101, and then I upgraded these trains. In theory, the maximum speed is less than or equal to 101, because it is actually 101. Uh, therefore, the trains would still be allowed in. Likewise, if I change these signals to 156, greater than or equal to, it is greater than or equal to 156, because it's equal to 156, so trains will be allowed in. That's what these do. Is and is not is basically means equal to. 
this means less than, this means less than or equal to, this means more than or greater than, and this means greater than or equal to. And then here, you open this and a little dialog box comes up, you just type in the value and click OK. So that is how I program these signals. There are, however, extra buttons around here. First of all, this one here, which I find very useful because I've got this selected at the moment. Let's then say that I scooch on over to Wenfing Field and I'm doing something here with this box open still. Um, and I quickly want to go back over to GSMI to check something. The best thing to do, this little arrow pointing off to the right here, if I click on it, it takes me directly to the signal. I'm trying to think, is it that one there? I think it is in the middle of the screen. Um, in this case, it doesn't matter because I'm, I just wanted to go to GSMI. But sometimes there are specific signals that you might want to refer to again. So um, you might have to look to see which one actually lines up with the center. I think it might be this one or this one. Um, but yeah, you click that little button and it takes you there. This allows you to change the size of the box. The most important one for me is this one. It currently says unshare, but if I select, uh, that's a bad example, this one, you see instead of saying unshare, it says share. Now this has no uh, functions in it at the moment, and I'm not going to add any for this demonstration, but let me just say that if you want to have a, a signal that shares its functions with another signal, um, so in fact you can already see here, this signal actually shares its functions with five other signals. So if I find, all right, it was that one, third from the left that I had. So um, it shares with five others, or it is, yeah, sorry, it shares with five others, shared by five signals. No, it shares with four others. There are five in total. Deary me, my head's all over the place. There are five in total shared by f four other signals. This one, this one, this one, and this one all have the same functions. And the way that I did that, and I'll show you by closing all of these for a second. Um, if you want to reset a signal's functions, you just click the reset button. Now here, you have two options. You have copy or you have share. Now these are very, very important that you remember which one does which. If I just click copy and then click the neighboring signal, it will copy all of these functions over. But if I have five signals with all the same functions, and I want to change all five signals, say uh, I build an extra waypoint here, and I want to use this waypoint instead of this waypoint as the, uh, the reference point for all of the trains entering and exiting these platforms, the way I would do that is to share the function like this, and then if I change this to the new waypoint, every signal with the same function using the share tool will have their functions changed as well. Whereas if I just use the copy, I don't know why I closed that box then, if I just use copy, it means that I don't have to put these all in again by hand, but if I now change, uh, let's say this, to say front of signal instead of back, these ones, even though I used the same basic functions, these ones will not change because I only copied the functions, I didn't share them. So let me set that back. Um, there was also, uh, you have an option here to remove, so if you click on, in, on an individual thing, you click remove. But bear in mind, all of these inside functions here, they're all depending on this one here. So if I remove this function, which I'm not going to do currently because it's shared, but it will remove all dependencies as well, um, including the allow, which is why I, I structure mine like this, because it's very easy to change this. Say I want this train or this platform here to start accepting goods and passengers. It's very easy for me to reset this, do the copy, and then take out this line. In fact, I would just change it to max speed, um, 125, and then remove this line, and then just re reinsert the uh, allow command. So that's how I do my signaling for terminus stations. This is going to be quite a long tutorial. <laughs> thinking about it, half an hour already. Um, so that's how I do my terminus stations. Now there are sometimes other um, factors that I include. For example, 
Um, I mean, GSP is a good example. You can see here, this platform here is only four tiles long. The buffers don't count. They're just decoration. So this platform is four tiles long, which means really only a train up to four tiles in length can use this platform. Now, the game actually has uh, an inbuilt feature. Again, it might just be this patch, so don't assume that your game will do the same thing. But the patch I play on, Lieutenant Joker's patch, has an inbuilt feature where the train knows how long it is at any one time. So this train here is six carriages long, which means it is three tiles long. Because in the case of the, the British um, trains, new GRF, each carriage is approximately half a tile in length. Uh, so you always take the length of the train in terms of carriages and then you halve it and that's how many tiles it takes up. So this train here is also um, three tiles long. This one I think is five tiles long. I think it's a ten unit long train, two power cars, eight carriages. I think that's right. So it should be five tiles long. But it doesn't matter this, for this instance anyway. There are some stopping trains that I have. Um, and there aren't any here which is kind of annoying. This one. This one here is six tiles long, which means it is obviously too long for this platform. So it, the train actually knows that it's six tiles long. So it will, it will only look for a platform that is at least six tiles long. So in this case, that works perfectly. Now, I don't really want short trains using this platform because it stops longer trains from being able to access it. So I could, in theory, set this up here. And instead of having cargo passengers, I could change that to um, train length. Now, again, I won't use that signal because I'll have to reprogram it. So I'll put another signal here and then just program this one to say if train length um, top. And then this is how long it is in terms of tile length. It's not carriages, it is tile length. Bear that in mind, because that, that also is important. Because if you have a four tile long train and you put um, four here, or you have a four carriage long train and you put four here, it actually treats it as four tiles, which means the train might not be allowed to enter the platform. And then it's the same as max speed. So you've got is or isn't, which is the same as equal to or not equal to, and then you have less than, less than, equal to, greater than, greater than, or equal to. Um, and then you can do as you wish with that. Right, so that's how I do terminus. Now I'm going to show you how I do through stations. So if I follow the Great Western line down here, we get to the first major hub station here at Great Winfield Airport, which uh, if you watched the video where I built the Great Western route or rebuilt the Great Western route, you'll notice that this looks a little bit different to how it did last time. I've actually staggered these platforms slightly. Um, I think I've got one six tiles in length, unless the train uses this platform here, which it probably does. Uh, oh no, it will use this one here, this one's six tiles long. So it's, it's a little bit finicky. The problem is you can't just move an airport when there's planes using it. So I had to try and build around the existing infrastructure, which wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, but this, this is important because we actually have, uh, in this platform here, we have terminating trains and we have through trains. So this is how I set this up. So if there's a short train like this one here, which is only four carriages and two tiles long, it can use any of these platforms because it can fit in all of them. Uh, bear in mind that this one is only three tiles long. One of my bugbears in this game is that you can't put a signal on the same tile as a platform because I'd love to have an extra platform here because this looks a little bit weird. Um, you might remember on one of my old maps I built a station that was based on Cambridge but ended up looking nothing like Cambridge because of the way I had to lay out the platforms. So you can already see here how I've set up the signal. So these are two separate functions. Um, they are two separate things. If, there's, if it's possible, I'd put a gap between them just so you can see. End if is always the thing to look out for. So in this case, deny, no train allowed. If the train is entering from the back of the signal, then if the next order is Plodston East Slow 3, which I think is here, yep, then allow. This is for terminating services. So actually only terminating trains can use this platform here. Uh, and likewise here, only trains entering from the west that are then going back to the west can use that platform. Um, so that's the first thing. And then allow end if, end if. So this is now nicely closed off now. You can always see, if it's in line, 
it's the same thing. Although this is also in line, so maybe that doesn't work. But here I've got if train is entering from the front of signal. So if a train enters here, terminates, and then wishes to return in this direction, to head back towards, in this case, DSP, um, then it will enter the signal from the front. Now initially, uh, a little while ago now, I complained that I couldn't get that to work. I couldn't get trains to reverse in the platform. And I think the problem was I didn't have this function. So I had the one from if it enters from the back, but I didn't have this one. So this one says if a train enters from the front of the signal, no matter where it's going, how long it is, or anything like that, just allow it to. So any train that runs into this platform will terminate, and then as soon as it turns round, this signal providing the route is clear will immediately turn green and the train will be allowed to leave back towards GSP. That's how I do my through platforms here um, that terminate also. This one here is a through platform, like there's no terminates here. So this one um, is always, if train enters from the back of signal, then move on. If the next order in this case is Great Winfield West Slow 1, which is uh, here, then move on. However, I've also got an OR IF function. So OR IF is um, if you have a platform that you want trains that can go in multiple directions, so in this case it can either continue on the main line or it can diverge onto this branch line here, uh, you put an OR IF function. So if train is entering from the back of signal, allow, if, oh, sorry, not allow, move on. If the next order is Great Winfield West Slow 1, then move on. But if it also, um, or if the next order is the branch, then move on and then allow. I've also got this one set to front, not because it's a terminus platform, but because um, trains run in the opposite direction as well uh, on the slow lines. So kind of makes up for that. It's a little bit confusing how I've built these stations, but they actually work quite well. So I'm not too worried about them. Um, oops, did not mean to open that. Now as well as or if, you also have else and else if. Now else if, it, I don't tend to use. Um, else I also don't tend to use. Because, um, as I said, Lieutenant Joker has his setup. He doesn't have the deny at the top. He just has if train is entering from the back then if next order is then allow else deny so his is the opposite way around for me mine is always don't let any trains through unless they meet these criteria the way he sets it up is let the trains through if they meet this criteria otherwise uh, deny them essentially so um they do the same thing but the terminology is is slightly opposite if that makes sense uh, so the else just the else works like that, else deny. Um, the else if, I think, so like here, um, let's see here, I put an else if. So like, uh, if train is entering from the back of signal, then if next order is Great Winfield West Slow 1, then allow. Else if the next order is Great Winfield Branch West 1, then deny. Now I think the else if will actually work better if you also add things like penalties. Now I'm going to use a bit of factorio language here for a second, so I, again I, I'm speculating what this actually means. Uh, I'm going to use some factorio knowledge here, so if you don't play factorio you might not understand this, but in factorio um, trains try and find the quickest route between A and B, which is exactly how they also work here on OpenTTD. So for example this train goes into the platform and it then wants to head to this waypoint, it will look for the fastest route to do that. Um, the thing is with Factorio is if you put uh, a station on the track between A and B, so you add C, uh, going through C will add a penalty to the distance that the train has to travel. So even though the distance itself hasn't changed, the train will add a penalty to any station, so it will always use like a bypass track. Um, and the game has that built in to force it to do that. Likewise, OpenTTD has exactly the same system. It might not function the same, it might not be programmed the same, but the theory is the same. A train will look to avoid using a platform if a track next to it that doesn't have a platform is available. So in the case of uh, Great Winfield, over here, there are two through tracks here. Now I actually added the waypoint just to make sure there is no confusion. But if an HST was coming down here, 
it went, went through this waypoint and the next order is this waypoint it can either go through the, a platform or it will go through the through track and in this case it will always go through the through track because um, going through a platform adds a tiny penalty to the the distance that the train thinks it has to travel now I think from the language used adding a penalty to a signal does the same thing so let's say there's a track here that I don't want a train to use as often unless it absolutely has to I could in theory add a penalty so add small pathfinder penalty and then small medium large custom I think that's how that works I've never used it although now I've seen it I can think of some uses for it so I might actually do that we'll see um, again on the metro that will be very useful indeed because it, it, it then forces trains a little bit more to go the routes that you want them to go on rather than routes that it might take instead I think that's it for how I program signals like I said if there's any questions or anything that you think I've missed out um, comment on the the reddit thread and just ask me for extra detail or to go over it again or whatever it might be um, I'll be more than happy to do that for you uh, the last things I want to show you are how I distance my signals so if I go into the game settings and type signal so my signals are always on the driving side so uh, in this case the left hand side is where most UK signals are there are some on the right hand side particularly in and around huge junctions but majority of the time it's on the left hand side so that's always set up enable the signal GUI that's just this um, then you've got things like this automatically build semaphores signal types build by default these really don't matter to me because I always switch between them anyway uh, cycle through all so you can disable certain types when dragging keep fixed signal between uh, keep fixed distance between signals this is currently set to off but I will switch it on from time to time uh, and then simulate signals in tunnels and bridges this is specifically for this patch um, some might have th this feature in other patches some might not um, and then you've got routing here so automatic reversing I've got off and back of one way OBS OBS no PBS uh, is a safe waiting point I've got that switched off as well because that's not realistic so that's how I've set up things here and then in this you will notice this number and these two arrows this is the uh, distance between signals but it always works as an n minus one um, basis so on my slow lines which you can see here I put my signals 12 tiles apart so let me go into the actual railway construction for this so if I grab the rail tool here and drag it across keep them 10 signals apart not 12 I have a system I do have a system it's 10 signals um, between signals on slow lines and then it's 14 between on fast lines and if it's only a two track line then it's 12 that's where I got confused so I've been building a lot of two track lines recently um, so yeah there's 10 signals here uh, 10 tiles here so the number is actually one more than the gap if that makes sense. So here the gap is 10 so I set this to 11 because it places a signal on the 11th tile that's why that's set up like that. Uh, now I'll show you on this little stretch of track here because I can do this very quickly so I want to build some signals on this stretch of track here so I've, I'll build this one first and this is my datum this is what all my reference points will be off now you can see here these ones are already set up so I know what the distance is anyway so I could in theory just go and build these by hand but the way I do it is I hover over the first signal press and hold the control key and then hold the left mouse and drag you can drag it any distance you like I sometimes just do it one tile let go of left mouse and you'll see it's placed one there and it's placed one there so it does it to this distance likewise if I'm removing signals like you just saw me do I always click one tile before so I'll click here, uh, I'll show you again hold control, hold left mouse, drag to that tile and you can see it has removed all of them now it only does this up to a junction, a station or a waypoint 
So it's only these three signals that I've removed and replaced. At the other side of these platforms, these ones was stayed there the whole time. That can be quite annoying, because um, if I build a track and I accidentally do that, and then I try and place signals, um, this whole section here would remain unsignaled. Which is why when you saw me build these routes way back when, I always built the tracks and the signals first, and then I built the stations. And sometimes the station platforms are slightly staggered because of the way the signaling worked out. Uh, it's easier to do the signaling and then the stations than it is to do the stations and then the signaling. So that's that. Uh, you can also just um, click and drag, but I don't click and drag, so I don't know too much about that. Something else you can do if you hold control and you left click on a signal is you can change its type. Uh, so I think I went through all of them there, and now I'm back to block signal. Again, I, I chose a signal that you couldn't really see very well, so I'll do this one as well. So that's now an entry signal, that's an exit signal, that is a combo signal, that's a two-way path, that's a one-way path, that is this one here, which is a logic signal, which I also don't know too much about, so I'm not going to delve into that too much. I think logic signals are just... Um, because there's this gear wheel as well. And I think, yeah. So you can set up uh, extra inputs and things like that. But I tend to steer clear of that. Because it's not really my area of expertise. So you might have to look at additional tutorials for how to use that. That basically is how I do my signaling. Um, so the whole network is signaled to that. Through that process. Through that procedure. Again, like I said, if there's anything I've missed out. Let me know in the comments on the Reddit thread. Um, any other questions or anything like that, you can also ask in Premiere chats on YouTube. But um, it's a couple of weeks, I think, after this episode goes up before I next do a Premiere. So always bear that in mind. Reddit is the best place. Uh, yeah, I mean, Reddit is the best place now. So hopefully that's answered the questions on signaling. I have been helping out people with regards to train orders as well. So I'll do another bonus video in a couple of weeks' time where I talk a bit more about how I order and schedule my trains. Um, because again, there are different patches that do different things. So um, what I do isn't necessarily possible for other people. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I answered all the questions. Like I said, if I didn't, let me know. Um, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you enjoyed the rest of the series so far. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed and you'd like to see more content like this on the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Um, and on the other side of that, if you have already subscribed to the channel thank you guys for your continued support it is much appreciated until next time i will see you soon